No one will ever forget September 11th, but a Treasure Valley woman says for her, every morning getting out of bed is a stark reminder of what happened that day, and she wonders if she's not alone. Michelle Edmonds has her exclusive story. Debbie Capone vividly remembers the last time she danced. It was this late July day, 2001, in New York at her son's wedding reception. Only weeks later, life as we all knew it changed. Oh my God! For Debbie, September 11th became the beginning of a journey she is still trying to navigate. So today, are you convinced that your paralysis is linked to 9-11? In my heart, I believe so. Like millions, Debbie watched the horror of that day unfold on television from her Long Island home. She experienced both panic and relief as her family members and a neighbor missing for 10 hours made it home safely. She was covered in dust. She ran. She ran from that part of Manhattan. And they all kept running and running. There was no way to escape the dust. Just 25 miles from ground zero, the Capones could see, even taste the aftermath. Where we lived, we were getting dust blowing our way forever, it seemed. Little did Debbie know she would live with the effects of the terror attacks forever. Four months after 9-11, on an ordinary January morning, the 48-year-old felt weak and had to sit down. Immediately, this fireball went through my body, the most, in, it was internal combustion, just burning, burning, burning. I couldn't bend my toe. And that's at 7.25. By 7.30, I was paralyzed to my diaphragm. You weren't understanding what was happening. No. Or, but you also doesn't sound like you were that scared? or No, you... because something's happening. I'm going to go to the hospital or to my doctor's office, and they're going to fix it. That never happened. I came in second that morning to the emergency room. A young man had come in with his arm weak and paralyzing. And by the time I got into the hospital around 10, he was a quadriplegic. Two people, same day, same symptoms, no clues. It was like, what is going on? Doctors ran every test imaginable and finally reached out for expert help to the Centers for Disease Control. The diagnosis? Unknown virus to mankind was what came back to us. Unknown virus to mankind, a conclusion Debbie couldn't live with. My reaction was, heck no. For the next two years, Debbie traveled to specialists to be poked and prodded, searching for an explanation. There was none. Only one connection ever stood out. So this young man and I both had ingested dust, inhaled dust on 9-11. No one has ever confirmed her theory. And 14 years later, Debbie is still confined to a wheelchair. Yet she remains positive and resilient. My faith sustains me, and it always has. So there's a reason that this happened to me. Without her disability, Debbie says she would have never left her real estate broker job to move to Idaho to be near her grandchildren, a decision that's given her more pleasure than she could have imagined. I'm the sleepover grandma. <laughs> I'm not the grandma that flies in and out. I am the sleepover grandma. Grandma Debbie still hopes she'll someday walk, perhaps dance again, even if she never gets answers. We make the best of what we've been given. And I've been given five wonderful grandchildren. And I'm going to live to be 100. Michelle Edmonds reporting there, proof that there is a silver lining to everything, but just a confounding story. Debbie says she's always wondered who else besides those right at ground zero that we've heard a lot about were affected by the dust. Studies by the New York City Health Department have found asthma and post-traumatic stress disorder to be linked to the 2001 attacks, but nothing else.